Hello and welcome to today's session on Software Development Lifecycle, SDLC in short. Before we get started, a little introduction about myself. My name is Nayantara Nandamuri. I am a business analyst with experience in waterfall and agile projects. Today, I will be walking you through what SDLC is and what the business analyst activities would be at different stages of SDLC. SDLC is nothing but the various stages in the development of a software, namely planning, requirements gathering, design, coding, testing, deployment and maintenance. For the purpose of this session, I am taking the example of an insurance company building online capability to sell insurance policies. The first phase in SDLC is planning. Planning involves goal setting for the project. In our example, being able to sell insurance policies online is the goal. It also involves feasibility study, determination of high level features, determination of sponsors for the project and vendor selection if a new vendor is to be selected. Typically, CXO level employees, stakeholders, senior project managers and senior product owners are involved in this phase. It is important to note that BAs may not always be involved in this phase. However, depending upon the organization's practices, lead BAs could be involved. The project initiation document is an outcome of this phase. The expected completion date for the project, also known as EDD, could be set in this phase. After go ahead is received from senior management, the requirement phase starts. In the requirements gathering phase, the client describes details of the features or the capabilities that they want in the new software to be built. These are called business requirements and further categorized as functional and non-functional requirements. With regard to web development, examples of functional requirements could be information to be captured about the prospective customer and calculations to be performed. Examples of non-functional requirements could be estimated traffic that the site is expected to handle and the terms and conditions to be displayed on the site. During this phase, the BA works with project managers, architects, representatives from different business areas. Mockups for the look and feel of the site are agreed upon. Formulas are provided by the client for any calculations. Based on the outcome of the requirements gathering activity, the business analyst prepares the business requirement document, functional requirement document, and functional specification document. The business analyst also does the system impact analysis and identifies the business areas affected. The business analyst could also come up with the 2B process map. All these documents are reviewed with the client and sign off is sought from the client. Once sign off is provided by the client, the design phase starts. Based on the outcome of the requirements gathering phase, the architect determines the hardware and software requirements. The architect creates the high level solution design document. The architect also creates the high level architecture. Senior programmers may also work with the architect in this phase. It is important to note that business analysts may not be actively involved in this phase but it is good for the BA to be aware of the high level design. Once the design is approved, the hardware and software procured, the project moves into the coding phase. During the coding phase or the development phase, the developers seek the help of business analysts to understand the requirement from a functional perspective. The developers then create the low level design document for the individual business applications that they are working on. These low level design documents or LLDs as they are known are reviewed by the architect. After receiving the approval from the architect, the coding begins. 
each of the developers complete the code and perform the unit testing in their local environments. After all developers have completed their unit testing successfully, the codes are merged and tested to ensure that the merged code is functioning as expected and the developers have not overwritten each other's code. Data flow between systems is established in this phase. This is called integration testing. During this phase, dummy test environment is also created and it is called the UAT environment. Once integration testing is successfully completed, user acceptance testing begins. Before I begin explaining what user acceptance testing involves, it is important to understand that while the architect works on the high level solution design document and the developers work on the low level design document and coding, the business analysts and the specialist testers known as QA work on test plan and test cases. These are dummy activities to be performed in the UAT environment to validate that the code written meets the requirements of the client. So with regard to our example, where the requirement is to build capability for online sale of insurance policies, the PAs and the testers could apply for dummy policies in the UAT environment. Examples of other validations are verifying the text on the website and the associated automatic processes and validation messages. During the UAT phase, the test cases are executed and bugs are written up for failed test cases. Now let us take a look at the defect life cycle or the bug life cycle. As and when defects are logged, the defects are assigned to developers. The developers then analyze the defect in association with business analyst and architect. If the defect is found to be within the scope of the project, appropriate code and design modifications are made to resolve it and the defect is assigned back to the BA or the specialist tester. If the BA or the testers are not able to recreate the defect, the defect is closed. If the defect can still be recreated, the defect is reopened and assigned to the developer and the cycle continues till the defect is satisfactorily resolved. If during analysis it is found that the defect is out of the scope of requirements of current project or it is an existing production issue, then the change management process get started. The PM and the client work on it separately. The bug is no longer counted against this project. After all the test cases have been successfully signed off, the UAT phase is considered as signed off and the project moves into the deployment phase. Deployment is the most keenly awaited phase in the project. The developers work with the client operations team to deploy the code into production environment. The software developed, in our case, the online capability to apply for insurance policies is now live. The business analyst may not have an active role in the deployment phase, but can be involved in creating or updating user instructions or training the users. After deployment, the project moves into the maintenance phase. Maintenance involves upgrades to the system in light of new technologies. As we are all aware, technology changes every day, newer browsers come up every day, more people are going online. So our website, which is built today, should still be stable and relevant a few years down the line. So maintenance activities to keep the site running efficiently could be adding more servers to handle additional traffic, updates to support newer browsers, and updates to support newer insurance products launched by the insurance company. So this was an overview of the software development life cycle. If you like this video, please hit like and also please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.